In 2002, the map Piranesi was released for Counter-Strike, alongside Update 1.5. The person credited with designing this map is Ika Karanen, a Finnish game dev who has worked on many of Valve's most prized titles, Half-Life 2, Team Fortress 2, and Portal 2, to name a few. This release was where his Counter-Strike map design journey ended. That is, until 15 years later, with the release of Ika's second map, Canals. Canals is a very interesting map. It's one of the only three maps for Counter-Strike Global Offensive designed and created in-house by Valve, and of those three, it is by far the weirdest. Valve took a lot of risks with this map, and that's probably why it is nowhere to be found in the competitive queue today. But we applaud risks around here, and I'm actually a huge fan of Canals as a map. If I had to choose between this unhinged sniper SMG mayhem and a Dust 2 clone, I'm picking Canals 10 out of 10 times. It's pretty cool to note that this same hand designed both Piranesi and Canals, as the two share quite a bit in their design philosophy despite being so different. The tall, high up angles, the wide open spaces, it is pretty clear when you look at the first release of Canals that the same mind behind Piranesi had a hand in the creation of this map. On top of this, another interesting similarity is that the namesake of Piranesi, the Italian architect and artist G.B. Piranesi, was born in Venice, the real life city that inspired Canals. I doubt this was intentional, but I just thought that it was interesting. I know this is an unpopular opinion, but Canals is awesome. It's so different. This map features really two ranges of play. It's kind of tough to explain, but I'll try my best. The sight lines on this map and the most common angles that you will be fighting other players through occur in an unorthodox way to regular Counter-Strike maps. On a map like Mirage, for instance, all of the popular angles to be fighting someone on are mid-ranged in favor of the use of a rifle. This is what we think of Counter-Strike as, AKs and M4s. The reason that Canals is so weird is because there are almost zero sight lines like this on Canals, and nearly every angle that will be fought during most rounds is either a long-range angle that favors snipers, or a short-range angle that favors shotguns and SMGs. This is where you can start to understand why Canals was so unpopular. When you think of Counter-Strike gameplay, you think of AKs and M4s, not Mach 10s and Scouts. Canals just doesn't feel like the Counter-Strike that we're used to, and as such, nobody going out of their way to play Counter-Strike wanted to play it on Canals. While, yes, in theory rifles are still good, since they can take either duel with only some minimal disadvantage, in practice it's far more favorable to just specialize in one or the other depending on where you're going, since that will put you at an advantage, and in Counter-Strike, you don't have to take both sites. But I said earlier I love canals, and I love it because of its quirks rather than in spite of them. No other map introduced into the game in the past eight years, other than Insertion 2, has been so willing to break the rules of the game. If you've heard me talk about mapping in the past, you probably know that I designate Counter-Strike maps into two different categories, three lane and experimental. Canals is probably the most experimental map ever, if I had to put a pin into it. I can see the vision behind Canals. Yeah, it's imbalanced, and yeah, it probably couldn't be balanced without a lot of changes, but it's fun. I have my doubts as to whether or not it would be fun to watch in the professional pool. I mean, there's a chance that it's really cool and we get to see some inventive executes and utility due to its weird layout, but I think it's far more likely to me that it ends up kind of like a worse Vertigo, if you know what I mean. The A site is easily my least favorite part of Canals. It's so tiny, the plant area is barely defendable from anywhere. In a clutch situation, this site is borderline unplayable. I do like the weird thing they tried with the one-way drop through here into the site, but even then, this position isn't even that good and the place you drop into is super exposed and has nowhere to retreat to. That is actually a pretty good way to summarize Canals as a whole. A lot of great ideas that were never really fleshed out enough to become what they could have. An unfortunate result of this, as far as I can tell, is that Valve and a lot of the community as well have strayed away from trying new ideas that deviate from the norm. I love the Counter-Strike community, but if there's one thing that we are, it is stubborn. That resistance to change is what has made our game so resilient. We like Counter-Strike as it is, we don't need constant patches to keep the meta interesting. One drawback of that stubbornness is that we're oftentimes unwilling to try new things, and Canals was a victim of this unfortunate attribute of our community. In these videos that I make on older maps, I often entertain the idea that these maps can come back. 
and to be honest, I do think Canals might get another shot in CS2. But the truth is, Canals will never get the full attention of the Counter-Strike community. Unfortunately, there is no way for a map to be fully pushed to its limit unless it is added to the professional pool. And undoubtedly, if Canals was added to the pro pool, it would be absolutely torn to shreds. Canals being added to the active duty pool would be an absolute disaster for the reputation of Counter-Strike. Even if it replaced a generally unpopular map like Vertigo or Ancient, Canals would be seen as vastly worse. I don't think that this is a bad thing. Again, our willingness to protest bad, untested changes is part of why we've lasted so long. However, Canals deserves to be rigorously tested, torn apart, and put back together in a similar manner to other maps, just so we can see how it might have evolved if given the chance. It's a weird paradox where the community will reject any map that is not up to professional polish or standards, yet it will also not play any new maps to give them a chance to evolve and be eroded into having those professional standards. The best way, in my mind, to incentivize Counter-Strike players to play new maps and game modes other than competitive is operation challenges. However, obviously we don't always have an operation. I know that this suggestion might not be taken super well, but what if CS added weekly missions and incentives similar to that of Valorant and other popular FPS games? Maybe lock an extra case drop per week behind completing three missions. Each week have the missions involve playing on a specific underexplored map, playing an underplayed game mode like Danger Zone, stuff like that. Maybe even encourage players to practice and learn a specific nade lineup to gradually raise the skill floor of the game. This idea actually helps the game a lot. Yes, not everyone would play the missions, but I think that the people who would be more drawn to them are people who play the game enough that they're willing to go out of their way to do the missions. These people are those that are most active in playing the game, and as such are more likely to be active within the community surrounding the game. If those people gave new maps a chance, they might just like them, and suddenly these maps that nobody really knows anything about have advocates within the community. Whether or not this happens, I will of course continue to put on for new maps. I think that Counter-Strike's classic maps are of course amazing, but just because one thing is great doesn't mean that we should never try something new. Canals is the unfortunate victim of our refusal to play things that challenge the well-known Counter-Strike formula. Canals was inventive, open, and worst of all, different, and it paid for its sins by being relegated to the casual pool. There is seldom a map like Canals that makes its way into Counter-Strike, and we took it for granted for the brief time that it was there. Canals was removed from the competitive queue on October 9th, 2018, just a year and a half after it was added. This update, and Canals as a whole, is such a minor consideration in the minds of the Counter-Strike community that it, along with around three or four other Canals-related patches, haven't even been updated to appear under the Changes tab on the Counter-Strike wiki. We are approaching five years from when Canals was removed from the game. In memory of Canals, let's not just let it become a footnote in the history of Counter-Strike. The release of CS2 and Hammer for Source 2 will undoubtedly bring about a whole new slew of ways that mappers can challenge the norms of Counter-Strike, and we should embrace these attempts to push the boundaries rather than reject them. Counter-Strike started as a mod. A willingness to experiment and iterate on something that is already good is quite literally in the DNA of our community. And we wouldn't be here without it. Thank you. All right, that's another one done. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I certainly enjoyed making it. I actually had a lot of fun making this one. Um, past that, uh, I've got another cool one cooked up for next week. I'm really excited for it, actually. It's real different from what I've been making lately, but I uh, think you guys will like it because it's one of my favorite videos that I've ever made. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, oh yeah, if you like the video, leave a like. If you like it even more than that, you know, you can subscribe. I'm down. Past that, see you next week. Yeah. Alright, bye.